Why you just can't shoot down a drone. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Jonathan Ruprecht, aviation attorney, commercial pilot, flight instructor, and contributor at Forbes.com. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you so much for having me. Give us a brief summary of your background, especially as it relates to unmanned aircraft, if you will. Yes, so my background is I was a commercial pilot and flight instructor prior to going to law school. And then while in law school, I started comparing the Japanese drone integration to the United States drone integration. And from that research, I ended up publishing a book and then was later asked to uh, be an author, co-author, to two chapters to the American Bar Association book on unmanned aircraft. And then I later on started my own law firm. And I've been doing drone law ever since, defending uh, people in criminal enforcement actions, as well as FAA investigations and taking waivers, exemptions, suing the FAA, all of those things. Unmanned aerial vehicles are everywhere in the skies now, right? But a growing number are there for some malicious purposes. As in every technological black hat, white hat duel, companies are entering the counter drone market to address the threat. So what are some of the common technologies employed today to counter malicious drones? Yes, yeah, so uh, the technology and the law are very heavily intertwined. So uh, you, you don't wanna be selling something to someone that they can't lawfully uh, right, operate, as well as those people are gonna get smart and realize, hey, I can't lawfully use this. I need to buy something I actually can use, right? And so there's actually a whole host of laws that are out there uh, re regulating these certain types of technologies that are used to counter drones. Uh, one of them is uh, the, the, for jamming, uh, there are federal statutes as well as federal regulations that prohibit the jamming of radio frequencies. You have to have the actual uh, transmitter license on top of that, selling, marketing, even the jammers are, is considered illegal. Yes, just this, the marketing. Uh, there's been at least, I think, two companies have gotten in trouble just for that. Um, so there are exceptions to that because the certain federal agencies can actually possess and deploy uh, jamming technology. I mean, the military does that all the time. If you've received uh, uh, notice to airmen subscriptions or probably checked them before flying, there are GPS interference tests that go on because people need to actually really test out the jam. Like, does this really work? We can't. Well, I guess we never know, right? You actually need to go out and test it. So they do it at certain military locations. Um, but it's really, uh, it's, taking, it's taking a sledgehammer to a fight and it creates too much, too much messiness to the whole situation. It's not very precise because you end up jamming everybody. Are you jamming GPS frequencies? Are you uh, the DOD, the GLONASS from the Russians? Uh, are you jamming the, uh, the Wi-Fi, right? The 2.4, the 5.8, the 900. And so that ends up whacking up everybody's, there's, there's the, everybody's stuff, as well as people are flying manned aircraft uh, via GPS, and you can cause all sorts of havoc to the national airspace. So that's how kind of like, if you will, law has intersected the technology, especially with jamming. It can't be done, but you don't, you don't see it too, too often. And additionally, there's also the federal crime of basically destroying an aircraft. Uh, 18, uh, Title 18, United States Code Section 32 makes it illegal to destroy and interfere with an aircraft, and that's problematic uh, because then people are like, well, what, how do I actually practically deal with the drone flying over my yard or around my airport and stuff like that because it's, there's a difficulty there. And that, while that, that is a criminal law, there's also, it's, it's not fully settled as to how certain other laws interact with it because this is such a cutting area of the law. You have other things. Uh, that, that play into this. You have uh, Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution that makes it a crime if it's in interstate commerce or navigable airways, right? So that becomes a problem because is it a problem to blow a drone out of the sky if it's in your house? That's not an interstate federal, right? Do you see how that becomes problematic? And so it's like, well, where are the jurisdictional limits that the federal government can make certain activity illegal, right? And then maybe it's best left to the states. And then you have your private property rights. So you're probably like, John, where in the world did you go off into property rights? It's like, that's counter UAS. Good luck to you. It's very, it's a jambalaya of legal problems. <laughs> I can see that. What are some of the, the industries, if you will, that are interested in counter drone technology? Uh, you have the you know, amusement parks, the sports stadiums, uh, chemical nuclear power plants. The, uh, you have the uh, prisons, uh, airports, the military. 
uh, all of those, um, even people that are just maybe more high profile that want to kind of protect their pro you know, privacy, all the Hollywood actors, movie stars, right? Be out in Hollywood. So those are the people that are interested in it. And that boils down to kind of like, well, who are you and what authority do you have, right? Kind of going back to that, well, where is your private property as national airspace? How high does it go up to? Because if you have a private property right to own something high up, high up can't you get, use self-help and ejectment? Well, but is self-help really the wisest, you know, using a gun to blow it out of the sky, the wisest use of self-help, right? So there's a problem there where also the technology to counter it for the normal civilian is also limiting because it's also too crude. You're blowing a drone, a drone out of the sky. Now you you blew up their drone and they're going to be upset about it. And in all the legal cases I've seen where people have destroyed the drone, the judge has always cited for the guy with the drone saying, hey, you can't be blowing people's drones up. Like you're going to have to pay for his drone, which adds a whole other mix to it because you feel like violated. And now you're like, no, you're taking my money. Like, that's not right. So <laughs> there's a lot of issues here. <laughs> So, so then what kind of recommendations can you offer to organizations or even individuals, like you say, who, who wish to legally discourage drone use over their property? Legal, yes. Uh, so one, you have to remember that people have a federal right to fly in the navigable airspace. So if you are uh, thinking you have privacy in your backyard, you need to remember that people have a right to fly over your property in a helicopter or whatever now the technology became more accessible right so now it's more frequent but you kind of think of it like highways in the sky if you were sunbathing out by the road you can't really be claiming a legitimate privacy interest saying like hey you can't be spying on me it's like well technology's changed i'm sorry uh so that's one issue if you are in fear of your life uh and and you know something's potentially going to happen to you then you need to call law enforcement and have them deal with it as opposed to you taking matters into your own hands because when you do so uh, that opens yourself up to all sorts of potential issues from uh, lawsuits where they sue you back, right? If they get an attorney and say, hey, you destroyed my drone, uh, you need to actually, you know, pay for it. Um, so you need to get law enforcement, not take matters into your own hands. You offer a lot of great resources for people who are uh, both interested in just learning about uh, how to protect themselves. Maybe you're interested in, in being a drone pilot themselves. Where can someone find these free courses and, and videos that you offer? Sure, yeah, they can head over to my website at uh, jrupeklaw.com. If you type in drone law or drone lawyer, I'll probably be one of the first so many ones that'll pop up. Just click on the link and you'll find all my resources there. And I have a newsletter you can sign up. And I send re e regularly emails out on new kind of topics as they come out, uh, especially things that are breaking news. Sounds good. Jonathan Ruprecht, aviation attorney, commercial pilot, and flight instructor, and contributor at Forbes.com. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.